Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino, makers of Domino One, the cloud-based authoring tool for e-learning. Learn how your team can work together better at domino.com. Now, here's this week's episode. My buttons disappeared. get the show started it's wednesday morning good morning chris good morning brent how are things in your world things are fantastic in my world we um, have beautiful weather this is the time of year that uh, arizona becomes gorgeous very cool yeah up here in eastern ontario it is peak fall leaves season um all the oranges and yellows and all reds and everything are out and uh Another week from now, things will start looking naked and bare and depressing. That's that's just the it's a it's a humbling reminder. It's like those monks who sleep in their coffins. We have fall here, and all the trees go bare, and it's a reminder that uh, that there is despair and darkness in the world, and we just have to plug through it. You know, soldier well, that's, on, that's, Chris, soldier on. Let's hope we can go up from there. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you, you... death and despair. That's a that's a heck of a starter. We like well, to set the bar low. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's the big picture thing. There's, you know, nothing but but goodness here on Idiotic. That's for sure. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And we got a whole bunch of people hanging out with us in the chat. Anybody dropping in some weather? Let us know where you're at. Oh, yeah, we've got Eastern Nebraska. Kim, good morning. Good Sounds morning. like it's hot in Texas today. Well, there's a shocker. Surprise. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, before we jump in, gang, if anybody's going to DevLearn this year, I think we've mentioned this in the past, but we actually have an idiotic booth at Dev DevLearn right beside the Domino booth. Um, you can come and uh, check in, say hello to Brent. There, there may be swag, he said very you know, subtly. Um, come say howdy. Come say howdy. We've also got some stuff planned uh, at the booth. Different folks are dropping by to have different conversations about our idiotic world. Um, so yeah, if you're at, if you're going to DevLearn, jump down, uh, pop by, say hello, have a wave, take a shot with Brent, and um, I, I mean a photo shot. He won't be drinking at the booth. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. Oh, and we're also doing that week um, idiotic live from the uh, the the sort of the lobby area. We've done this the, in the past at, at DevLearn. Year. So you're yes. you're actually welcome to join us and be in, be part of the gang on Idiotic uh, for that particular session too. So it'll be good times. Uh, the last time we did it was in 2019, Chris. You and I, we had donuts and coffee, and oh. we had about well, ten people showed up. We had a just a fabulous time in the foyer of the yep. event center. So yeah, um, and, and and that was at six thirty or seven in the morning, right? Uh, it was Vegas, Vegas time. So those were some really hardcore idiotic folks. And we, we absolutely were, were blessed that they that they joined us that morning. We, we appreciate their motivation to get up out of bed <laughs> and hang out with us and to do an idiotic show. So For with sure. that, heck, sorry, we're ignoring our guest. Yeah, well, we yeah, have we, with us. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, we wanted to get that out there before we forgot, because last week I completely forgot um, on that front. So blanked out on us. Gang, we have Mike Taylor joining us again. Uh, Mike, you've been with us before, but there may be uh, some folks who haven't met you yet. So give us some, introduce yourself to the folks here today. Yeah, so uh, Mike Taylor, as you said, I'm in Columbus, Ohio, where we've got our bursts of fall color happening now as, as well. I am... Uh, work at Nationwide Insurance, and I'm in the information risk management team. They're doing awareness and, and training and everything related to that. So, um, yeah, just basically everything, everything at this 
kind of pretty cool intersection of sort of learning and technology and design and where all that meets is where I kind of like to hang out and uh, play. <laughs> we are kindred spirits on that front for sure. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. I was telling Chris as people were starting to drop in, we've got a whole lot of tech nerds hanging out with us today in the chat. So <laughs> It'll be uh, it'll be super fun to engage with everybody. So we're gonna be talking about techy geeky stuff. Mike, how do you want yeah. to jump into this? Because that's a big topic. There's a well, lot. I don't know. I think I think so. <laughs> so these are my people. I feel I'm so excited to. to it's always uh, hard to find those people sometimes. So to get them all in the same place is a really cool opportunity. And so maybe not everybody is is far along that or not. But maybe the first question is. Do people even know what we're talking about when we say no code? Like, just what the heck is it, right? Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's what I was thinking too. It's like let's let's uh, maybe we should define that first, and maybe uh, you know let let people know, or maybe we ask the chat and say what do they think? Yeah, that'd be. I'd be is. really curious to see what what people say. I've got my sort of stock uh, way that I describe it, but I would be curious to see if anybody else has maybe a better yeah. one. So let's let's give the folks on the, the a moment on their keyboards to toss in. You know, what do you think, or what do you think of um, when you know the phrase "no code tools" comes up, for instance? And I have no idea. I've never heard of it. Is also a valid answer, which is okay. totally, Absolutely. totally, totally valid. Um, so, um, Quetzalcoatl, um, the master of the GIF, is uh, is in, and he's already typed in WYSIWYG. Stephanie saying, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. drop. WYSIWYG editors from Sarah. Kevin says, I feel clueless. And and Kevin, you're not you're not alone in that boat. Um, okay. Jim is saying drag and drop ways of creating code-like functionality. Um, authoring tools, buttons and drop downs, easy. Yeah, something to make life a lot easier. Tools that allow you to create without knowledge of CSS and HTML. So yeah, lots of different so those, things. Those are all very there. good. And, and I think yeah. if you ask different people, you'd get different answers. There's not mm -hmm. like a, a black and white line of these are no code and these are not no code. It's kind of fuzzy mm -hmm. and, and shades of gray. And so really the way I define it is if you're creating software, digital stuff without having to code, right? So I don't need to... Yeah. Uh, code something to hook into an API or don't have to code CSS, HTML, JavaScript, whatever it is. So it's doing stuff without needing to code. And how, so how long have you been looking into this kind of stuff? Like how long have no code options been around? Well, so they've been around for probably longer than a lot of people think. So I probably started messing with them kind of been about five or six years ago now. Uh, you know, the thing that got me into it, <laughs> depending on who you're asking me, they're lazy or efficient. And so I, I, we had a big project, had a big project that we were doing 42 workshops in 40 cities, like all across the country. And so you can imagine registration data and system data and we had webinars and we had online course, we had this stuff flying all over the place. And I absolutely hate sort of that brain dead work of copy paste copy from here go to that window go to this app i hate it hate it hate it hate it and so that's when i kind of started playing around with zapier so zapier is an automation tool i sort of sort of call it plumbing for the internet so if you want to if somebody registers in your survey form you want to send that data to your webinar platform and automate that process so that's how i got into it seriously for the first time and so we had a, I think it was a survey monkey registration form. And I used Zapier. I kind of call them recipes to set up a recipe to send name and email to automatically enroll them in the MailChimp campaign. Send it also to the uh, webinar platform, which I think at the time was go to webinar and they had no bulk import. And that was really the single treasure. Like, I'm not copy and pasting all this stuff. <laughs> like, I'm just not doing it. And so it really, imagine, you know, I spend a little bit of time up front to set that up and then everything runs itself. So it's a really huge, huge benefit just to be able to get rid of all that drudgery and focus on stuff that matters more. Sure. 
Yeah. Well, it's, and it's interesting. Most of the folks, a lot of the folks anyway, in the chat were thinking of, um, you know, authoring tools, but here's something that's actually solving um, a problem that really it's, it's a, it's a resource waste if a human actually has to do this type of a thing over, over and over again, even if it's not us. Um, um, yeah. But being able to do that in a, in a no code way, because that sure sounds kind of, you know, technical taking stuff and porting it from one place to another and formats and yeah, and, it, 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 and it's really, it's really easy. So to using Zapier as an example, it's, it's gotten pretty popular. So it's almost like a wizard. So you pick, you know, if this happens in this tool, so you're connecting all of the tools you're already using. Um, and it, it really walks you through. So in my example with the, the registration form, it'll say, okay, I want to start with survey monkey. Mm -hmm. When a new registration there comes in, I want to automatically enroll them in a webinar. And so you choose your tool, you answer a couple of prompts, you know, it really, anybody can do that in, you know, a few minutes and it's super super simple so that's that's on the automation side i think there's two big categories so there's sort of workflow automation which yeah. is that example but then there's also you know the creation part so creating a, a custom app which you know five years ago i'd have thought oh i could never do that it's so technical whereas today my kids can do it in about 15 minutes and again, no code involved. So there's all kinds of things you can do. And I think those are the two big buckets is, you know, workflow automation and then the actual sort of creation of stuff. Right. Oh, um, and it, and it crosses a lot of different places too. I mean, a uh, uh, Domino, uh, the tool that we build our actual, you know, website in is technically a, a no code code type of tool. Um, as well, so it, you know, this idea of no code creeps across all kinds of different uh, tool categories for sure. It, it's interesting. I, I think I would say that like, the earliest form of like no code might have been macros, right? I mean, you kind of had to sometimes code depending upon what platform you were in, but you could build a macro to do something that was typically repetitive, right, and make life easier for yourself. But yeah, I think nowadays it has gotten, they've all gotten a lot easier. I, I dropped if this, then that in the, in the chat. And it looks like there's other folks that are definitely users of that, which is very similar to Zapier. I think Zapier is more enterprise kind of, or yeah, more business so I, related. I think, uh, um, so IFTT, I, I would say it's more consumer. It's like, if you have smartphones and smart things, it's a, it's a lot of, you know, that sort of stuff. Zapier is probably integrates with more. I don't know how many thousands of tools and apps. Yeah. Um, well, and, and then we've there's, been, there's, yeah, we've been experimenting with, yeah, Office 365. Thanks, Kim. We've been experimenting with that, uh, the automation piece, uh, Power Automate, I think it's called. And yeah, uh, you can do some super cool stuff uh, with that to automate your business processes. And, and I think that was one of the cool reasons why I really wanted to have this conversation. I thought this idea was fantastic because I think a lot of times in our industry, when in podcasts and everything, we, we focus so much on design and development and the, and all of the ID stuff of what we do. We sometimes forget that as corporate professionals, there's a lot of other stuff that's part of our job. I mean, you mentioned just one of them, managing registrations to the courses that you're creating, right? So many of us are, are um, uh, you know, a one person shop and you have to manage all of that stuff, right? We've, we've even done episodes on, on being a, being a one man band uh, training department and whatnot. And these, these, these types of conversations I think are, are helpful like that for, to help everybody, you know, with, with the non-authoring stuff. Well, and, and it doesn't matter if you're L and D or accounting, like everybody has this stuff. So you've got to manage calendars and registrations and invitations and, you know, status reports. So it doesn't matter what your role, it doesn't matter what, field you're in like everybody can can benefit yep so what, what are some other areas you've uh, you've experimented in well so the the link that i shared you that has some some resources um I'm dropping that in right now there we go so so that's a that's a no code tool so this is kind of more into the content side so as L D people we probably all have spreadsheets with links and descriptions and like everybody has spreadsheets 
but it's not really great to say, hey, here's my spreadsheet, you know, go and learn all this stuff. It's just the experience kind of sucks. Yeah. But uh, so that, that link that Brent just put in there, there's a tool called Spread Simple, which will take your spreadsheet and will build this really di- nice visual, uh, sortable, filterable, you know, highly functionable website. And all you have to do is say, okay, this field is the title, this field is the description, this field is. So you're just doing, again, sort of like a wizard. And it builds this beautiful website in, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, which before I might have been able to to hack together a kind of ugly website, but I wouldn't have been able to have filtering and sorting and all that sort of stuff. So that's that's a that's another a really good one. You know, all the way all the way up through through custom apps. So um, we were gonna we were actually gonna have a, a, a no code full day workshop at DevLearn this year, but we only had a couple people register, so it ended up getting canceled. So all of you folks who are here, spread the word so we can do it again next year, because I think it's super super valuable for for people. Yeah. But uh, Matthias has built entire uh, onboarding. So think about what you would pay for a platform that pay for onboarding, routes, documents, for approvals, sign-offs, registers for appropriate training, the whole, the whole ball of wax. Like what would you pay for a platform that probably you would think a lot of money? He built it completely using zapier and no code tools for about i think it cost them a couple hundred bucks a year to run hmm. and it and it's and it's custom and it's works super well it's easy it's user friendly and it's really that's an example it's just one example of the type of stuff that you can do on the learning side I think a lot of it's the metric side um, is going to be really helpful too for folks, right? When you're, um, you know, when you're gathering that, have you, um, you know, being able to connect to enterprise, uh, you know, level platforms, right? Whether it's Microsoft Outlook or maybe you're a Google shop in in the company you're working for or whatever, you know, um, it's sometimes those all the different departments, technologies don't talk to each other you know, too well. Is there, does Zapier work with, or any of the other tools work with some of those? Like if you're behind a firewall, I guess is what I'm really trying to get at. Like, can you use those types of SaaS based platforms to start connecting all the dots within the business? Yeah. So if you're in sort of corporate firewall environment, uh, we, we, we mentioned power automate before. So that's sort of Microsoft's version of something like, like Zapier. So that will integrate you know, SharePoint and the whole Microsoft stack. And you can do similar things. The learning curve is a bit steeper, but it's but it's really, really powerful to do that in the corporate firewall environment. Um, Zapier, I don't know how many thousands of, of tools they're up to now, starting to see LMSs connecting with Zapier. So I know for, for example, um, I don't know, there's, there's probably a, a dozen or more different LMSs um, that will now let me do these. You know, if I get a web registration, enroll them in this course. So, so the more, there's more and more learning applications that are popping in there. So you can do a lot of stuff just generically. Now a lot of L and D tools and LMSs and systems are, are populating as well. So you can do even more. Mm-hmm. What do we what do we think about when um, when we're trying to strategize this kind of stuff and figure out you know like like how we want to do it within the company? Have you ever run into pushback? People saying no, we shouldn't do that. Like it's a bad idea. Well, actually, you know, at Nationwide internally, so we have an entire group and a community that's entire purpose is to facilitate this sort of uh, citizen developers is, is sort of what they call it internally. And so they will help you, you know, think out a lot of times, all of this stuff, like, like a lot of things, the hardest part is getting your logic down the way you want it to be. 
once you have the logic, the building is relatively easier. And so we've got internal consultants who, you know, they'll help you and advise you and, you know, which way are the best path and logic and tools internally. So they've really, you know, it was one of the things of, of many that I've been pleasantly surprised since I've been at Nationwide is, is they're really adopting this stuff and not only just saying it's okay, but facilitating and supporting it. That's really cool because we, we can have an idea of what we might want, but having some extra eyes to help us, you know, determine what the actual, you know, routing and pathway or, or whatever that we're trying to design and that that level of experience too. people having done similar things and therefore can chime in that this tool might actually be more suited than that certainly saves a, a an awful lot of time for those of us who would be sort of you know jumping in without that knowledge very cool yeah and those 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 people you know they're worth their weight in gold because not only can they help you with uh, the power automate stuff or whatever but you know, internally, you always hit those roadblocks of, you know, something's blocked or something's not enabled and you don't even know what to ask for. And so to have those folks to be able to say, oh, this is the approach and here's the access you need, like that would save you. I mean, everybody who's worked in that environment, I mean, that could save you days or weeks or more. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's some, some chat in the chat file, chat zone there um, about things like, like privacy and, and um, particularly say with using Zapier. Um, Stephanie's noting because the industry that I work in, we're very limited on being able to use apps uh, to connect things between systems without a full IT review. So it sounds like in your particular case at Nationwide that that's been, you know, that's that's an ongoing thing and it's already been some some groundwork done on that. Clearly some things have been cleared for for usage, et cetera. But other folks are asking, you know, are there concerns then about data privacy with something like with Zapier? Um, I mean, does Zapier and I know I know Zapier and I know what it does, but I never actually you know touched it. So if you're using Zapier to connect, say, two things or or whatever, does the data that you're using flow through something on Zapier's own servers then, or um, or is it that you're taking something you made in Zapier as a widget and putting it somewhere else? Yeah. So so Zap Zapier is using um, APIs which have been around for you know 100 mm -hmm. years. You just you just had the code to tap into those. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Zapier, I don't, I don't, I'm 99% sure Zapier is not holding any data. It's just making the connection. It's doing the API work piece. Okay. Um, and then internally, it's important. It's important to sort of make sure we call out, like, if you've got, if you've built a custom coded application inside, unless you specifically put an API in that and, and made it visible and available to something like Power Automate, it's just going to be inaccessible, right? So it can't connect any two systems you have. Obviously, there's there's some things around that. Um, so on the Zapier side, I say Zap, Zapier as in Zapier makes you happier. That's how I remember the <laughs> pronunciation. Um, but on the, on, the, on the Zapier side, right, if it's tools you're already using, you know, if you're good with the security of the tool itself individually, mm -hmm. then you should be good with the combination of the two. So... I'm, I'm, I don't profess to be a security expert, so I don't want to, to make any claims that I can't back up, but that's, that's the way that, that I understood it. And through conversations with our internal folks, you know, it's had, has it been an issue, so. Yeah, I, I just did a quick search and I did find um, a post that talks about some of those sorts of things, particularly with, uh, with happier Zapier uh, <laughs> there as yeah, well. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, I mean, uh, valid, valid concern right like you don't want oh, yeah. stuff to get out <laughs> i mean that's but, the very first you know, thing, the thing th that's the very first thing that uh, the, the it people are going to wait <laughs> you know so yeah absolutely and on the other hand I, I think i've seen in the past sometimes that whole security thing is, is an excuse maybe they, they don't for whatever reason you know want to to do it but you know if i'm sharing links to websites and you know i just want to do that in a way that's in an app or a you know, visually friendly website or something, right? There's no reason that like that's publicly accessible stuff. It's not any, you know, company secrets and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So that's, that's, that's been around for, you know, hundreds of years that, that challenge of what IT will allow and not allow kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And of course that's a, a, an organizational culture, you know, perspective too. It sounds like, you know, you're fortunate to be in a place that's pretty progressive 
on looking at that, these sorts of things as, as tools, et cetera, but there are also obviously going to be different um, different groups that have different, more cautious approaches to some of this stuff too. So, Yeah, I was going to say there's, I think uh, now would be a good time to interject that uh, everybody should know somebody in their IT department. Like <laughs> if you, you know, make if friends, buy them cookies. Make friends, buy them pizza and soda, do something. If you don't know somebody in IT, preferably management of some sort to help you get the things done that you need to get done as a corporate training professional, that should be number one on your list of things to do after this show. Uh, you know, um, for the longest time, uh, our industry didn't need to connect with IT, but now it's more important than ever and we should have... We should have that. So that's your I, friendly neighborhood public service announcement. <laughs> I totally agree with that. And if that's the first thing, the second thing should be go out and play with some of these. Not even if you don't use it, you should be familiar with yeah. what's possible. So go out and, and, you know, connect, connect a web form with your personal, you know, we all have personal tools that we use. Like maybe you're managing the little league team, right? Like connect, your Google Sheets and build a website with your team out of that. Like just to be familiar with what's possible and how this stuff works. Cause it's, it's coming. Yeah. And it's just only going to continue to become more prevalent and more important to know. So if you don't already have some familiarity with it, I think it benefits all of us to at least have that knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Let's do, um, let's do a pseudo survey quickly in the chat folks. Um, Let's let's rate your your personal comfort level with going to your corporate IT team with an idea like like this. Uh, one being not comfortable at all, wouldn't even dream of it. Two being okay, I might try this. Three being rock on, I'm totally comfortable. So, so in the chat, one, two, or three. One being not comfortable at all, wouldn't even dream of it. Two being yeah, we'd give it a try. Three being rock on, they they. I, I have no problems with it because we uh, get buy-in. Oh, and Mike, you show off. Number four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> and I, I expect to see 152 entries. And then we're going to total them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, good news is lots of threes and twos showing up. Um, nice. In fact, so far, I haven't seen a one yet. So that's... Um, uh, Cornell is saying very comfortable, but not optimistic. It will get implemented. <laughs> I guess there's that too, right? Yeah. I'll totally talk to somebody, but you know, might not yeah. get to. That's a oh, 1.5 maybe. Yeah, or maybe. <laughs> there's our first one from, from Jan. So yeah. <laughs> Jack is pointing up five. She had to, she had to go one higher than, but it, she says that the IT team is her. So. <laughs> I approve. So, so that means if anybody on here has an issue, just call Jack. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's funny. Hey, so let's do this real quick too. Um, let's uh, uh, think about kind of the future. You were you're mentioning that it kind of got me thinking a little bit about um, you know some of the conversations in uh, in tech these days that are going around. One of them being uh, like we're we're kind of talking about automation in general, right? But you can't really talk about automation these days without talking about AI, right? And there's all of that stuff going on right now with um, Dolly, and uh, you know, you just write some text in, and it'll make an image for you based on the text. And there's even new technology out. I guess it was maybe Meta is doing it, where you can type in text, and it'll make a video. Uh, for you based on, you know, whatever you typed in, uh, just all sorts of interesting AI stuff coming down the pike. Does that make this sort of automation obsolete? Do you think? I don't think it makes it obsolete. I think it's all, it's all connected and sort of part of the same, same systems. Um, you know, the AI piece is just going to extend what you can do with these sort of, you know, these automation recipes and um, no code pieces. So that's, that's pretty exciting. That's another thing that, you know, if you haven't been playing with those tools, you should go out there and, you know, I've been enjoying some AI writing tools. So you give it a, an idea and some keywords and it'll write a handful of, of snippets for you. And it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. So, uh, especially for people like me, writing sometimes can, can be a challenge just to give you that little boost or that head start. And I've got a block and I can tweak it. 
and it's a huge time saver. So, so that's another thing to go out and play with. What, uh, what kind of tools, uh, do you remember the name of that tool? Uh, the one I was just working with this week, it's called simplified and it does text and graphics. It's kind of does a lot of those things you mentioned all in, in one. So simplified, I don't know if it's a dot com or a dot IO, but one of those two will get you there. And it's, I was, I was really impressed. It's one of the most impressive ones I've seen so far. Hmm. Eric in the chat says, we've been working on implementing AI to help start the process of writing content. So very much what you're describing. And Stephanie also chimed in. Yes, exclamation mark. AI writing is very helpful for social media copy. And I see somebody talked about uh, Canva, which I'm yep. a huge, 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 huge fan of. And so, you know, if they're going to do something like that, I'm, I'm there for it because yeah. everything they do is, is fabulous. And that's another form of a no code tool, right? Like I can go in there and type some stuff and out comes these amazing graphics and videos and, and, and everything like that. So um, that would be one to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it feels sort of like, um, well, no, I'm sure somebody would be, would be working on this though, that AI, I was going to say, it feels like AI is the extension of, of this kind of thing where you've identified a problem and AI will help you you know solve it. But I'm also going to assume then that, um, for certain types of things that we do, you know, just thinking even all of the things that we do in Microsoft, um, you know, office suites of things, uh, AI could, I guess, be watching patterns that we're doing as individuals and suggesting then solutions based on, you know, repetitive tasks and, and things that we do going, hey, do you ever think about, so. Yeah, Microsoft's actually doing a bunch of that stuff and they, mm -hmm. they've got a new thing. I don't know how widely available it is, but it will, you know, it will read your emails. And when you go to reply to somebody, it will draft the reply for you based on previous conversations. It's, it's, mm. it's interesting and scary all at the same time. <laughs> a little yeah, bit. <laughs> Jessica has a great comment and it's something that I've often thought about as well is, you know, with, with AI writing for you, does it source like, like if, it, will it go grab quotes and will it, say where it kind of kind of where the ai got its ideas from or whatever i mean well i think i think that's an important question right because all this ai is it's being written and created by people right so if the people are good that's great if they're <laughs> maybe not quite as maybe a little more nefar nefarious or something like that right like i think that's a valid question to always consider of you know what and who is is behind this and not just blindly accept all, and if, all and the if, stuff that we see. And if you write something in your book or a blog post or something, and an AI, you know, system has already written something very similar, are are you plagiarizing AI at that point? <laughs> I mean, that's gonna make my head hurt. I can't even <laughs> wrap my head around it. Yeah, I think it's it, it's. Um, yeah, all of this is kind of fresh in my mind. I was listening to some guys chat about it on a podcast uh, yesterday. And so it, it's just like all of the different things and it all relates to the work we do as well, right? It being able to put, you know, uh, expectations or, you know, uh, maybe it's, uh, maybe we get to the point where, uh, um, legal training that we have to do, right? Compliance training, right? It's like you can take the whole legal document now and just copy and paste the, the legal code, paste it into something, and it automatically puts together your presentation, your, uh, you know, a video and uh, the slide deck for the facilitator, right? In <laughs> we're, we're, we're heading that way. I mean, there's, there's, um, there's a lot of tools you can get browser add-ins, right? And it will summarize the web page so the text and everything will summarize that for you and you can say i want it in you know one paragraph or 10 paragraphs or whatever and it will it will the ai will read that and summarize everything for you so we're we're heading that way for sure oi, 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 oi. <laughs> um mike let's ask the question the, the the backwards question have you bumped into something that you couldn't automate yet or something that you went, oh, it's not quite ready to do that for me yet. Well, outside of access things, right? Like, so if it's mm -hmm. a custom built thing, it just doesn't have a connection. That's that's one. Um, I don't I don't think that I've run into something just sort of 
logically or process wise, you know, maybe it's a specific tool I could use, but I could maybe switch to another one that, that was accessible. Um, and I haven't done, you know, I haven't done super complex things. So just connecting things. And most of it's been uh, around tools that are, you know, publicly externally available. So I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head of any specific dead ends that, that I feel. I think it would be more firewall things, accessibility type things. But uh, increasingly, we've got so many, many options. You know, if you hit if you hit a dead end somewhere, you usually have other other terms that you can explore. But that's a great question. Cool. I'm curious about anybody else. If anybody else has tried this and and hit <laughs> beyond IT challenges, um, any any other hurdles anybody else has hit? Yeah, it'd be fascinating if if, if you, folks in the chat if you have encountered something like this, uh, hit a wall. Uh, let us know. We can share that experience too. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the only wall really that I've hit in kind of practicing with it is that to to do some little bit more complex things and like parsing data and whatnot that it, it it's it can be a little bit of a struggle and maybe that's in the design of Microsoft stuff because their stuff is always less than user friendly but <laughs> um, like just getting into that power automate and um, you know trying to like just learn on your own is you can do very simple things or you can take like you know what recipes or whatever that's other people have created and you can modify them slightly but to do something really like like every time uh, an email comes in from this domain, uh, you know, uh, parse out all of the CC emails and put it into this spreadsheet and then parse out the other emails in the to field and put it in this other spreadsheet, you know, and just like all of the different elements, you know, uh, that you can put in, you know, you try to start to build that and you think you got it and then you click run and it errors out, you know, and it's just, it's this constant battle with trying to figure out where, what happened, you know, where it went. So I, you know, I don't think it's quite super wisey wig, just like the, super the, easy yet, but it's getting there. <laughs> the, the Microsoft stuff is not, I will, I will give you that. It's, it's, uh, I don't know, kludgy or, it, it definitely, you know, you missed a comma somewhere or something kind of, kind of stuff. So, so that's like a lot of things more challenging if you're mm. stuck behind the firewall and that stuff. I will tell you though, Zapier is not that way at all. So don't, don't be scared by this. If you're using sort of, you know, external public facing stuff, you know, which we all are, whether it's webinars or survey forms or whatever, I, I think a lot of folks will be surprised at how easy quick and easy that that something like Zapier and, and other options. IFTT is another one that's super easy. Step through the wizard and, you know, yeah. automatically deliver the weather report to my phone every morning at 7 a.m. So I know if I have to take the right. umbrella or whatever, right? Yeah, I was just I was just thinking about that on the on the iPhone. There is also um, uh, shortcuts and and it kind of I was kind of playing around with it yesterday. I don't even remember why now, but um, it was, uh, yeah, it's a lot easier than I thought it would be. They've, they've definitely simplified it. Cause I used to use what did, what did Apple used to call it sort of aut I think they just called it automator. There was a, there was an automator yeah. app where you could, I don't know that one. uh, it do some stuff in Mac OS. But again, that was sometimes required a little bit of, you know, extra coding knowledge and whatnot, but they've really done a great job on this and I, I feel like I need to make better use of it. But then I make all these cool little widgets and then I forget to go and use them. <laughs> I go back to doing the things that I do manually. So yeah, I think it's just cause I'm getting old. I don't know. It's muscle memory. And sometimes the biggest muscle problem is the memory, but anyway, yeah. Uh, Jessica threw a use case in the chat, trying to find something to automate creating emails that have some of the same content, but need to include different attachments depending on who you're sending it to. Yep. So um, an another thing that I, that kind of is adjacent to this stuff are there's a lot of marketing tools that you can yeah. use to automate this type of stuff. So MailChimp, MailerLite, there's there's a whole boatload of those so you can set up automations so you can automate a workflow and in that case 
And I've done that for a hospital system. And uh, you can use no code and Zapier and things to sort of filter data into that. And then once you get in there, you can generate, okay, if, if this is a doctor at facility A, they get this email with the relevant details. If this is a nurse at facility B, they get, a, you know, things relevant mm -hmm. to them. And that's something that's really easy to do in, in something like a MailChimp or MailerLite. Huh. And yeah. um, those campaigns, th those are another thing. It's easy to spend at least a little bit of time setting it up and then it runs itself. So those are, that's a, that's a great option, a great idea and, and a use case that something as L&D people should steal from our marketing friends. <laughs> there are there are definitely things that uh, the marketing world does that we can always learn from. Lots of uh, lots of innovation and lots of ideas too, both on these sort of technical kind of things, but even uh, oh gosh, influencing people and uh, and those sorts of, you know, things too. We've had that conversation here a few times. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I believe Mike was even part of that conversation <laughs> the last time we did it on Idiotic. Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah, done it a, a few the, times since, but yeah. Yeah. A lot of the, a lot of the marketing tools also. So I was looking at some stuff for, for a dev learn session this year around marketing tools and, you know, like you think interactive video, you know, oh God, how do I even do that? But the marketing tools make it super simple plus giving you the data. Mm. Right. So I I, yeah. I I get that stuff. So there's there's a lot of things that are worth stealing from from our marketing mm -hmm. friends. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. But uh, one thing we can't steal from them is time. And we are just about at the end of our time rope, as we can say, right? Uh, so. Yeah. I'm going to take a second here and I'll pop, uh, Mike, your, your list. Brent posted it earlier, but um, I'm going to type that link back in here. And I'll go ahead and tell everybody to not forget to sign up for uh, the LinkedIn group, Idiotic yep. LinkedIn group. If you're not a part of it, jump in there and uh, add some of the comments, some of the automation things you've worked on. For sure. Um, and don't forget, gang, as we mentioned earlier in our time together today, uh, Idiotic booth at DevLearn. So if you're going, go down and uh, go down that little hallway there and check out Brent. Say hi. Say hello. Um, Lots of things that uh, that Brent's organized at the booth, two different folks dropping by. And Tons of fun. I, I would be remiss if I did not point out that Domino uh, Learning Solutions, makers of Domino One, sponsors Idiotic here every week. And uh, it's technically a no-code tool. So uh, I threw a link in there if you're interested in seeing um, what Domino One can do for you and your, and your team. Indeed, indeed. And we're, uh... boy. We're super grateful Mike hung out with us today. Even yeah, Mike he couldn't be at his desk. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. I will be at the booth at Denver. Stop, stop by and see you for sure. Brilliant. Nice. As always, thanks to everybody in the chat too. Lots of great stuff going on there. Thanks so much, gang, for hanging out with us, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. And let's uh, do a little coffee drinking and dancing. Thanks, everybody.